Okay, so we're back for part two of the journey method, and here's where we left off in the last video. Uh, if you've gone through the exercise, you should now have 10 different stages through your house that you can mentally go through in your mind without needing to look at uh, the piece of paper that you have them written down. And now what we're going to do is, we're going to memorize a list of items. But instead of using objects, which we've done in the previous lectures, we're going to memorize a list of people. And the reason is because using this system, you can memorize pretty much anything that you want. And I just want to show you how beneficial it is by using something different. And what we're going to do is, like I said, use people this time. So if you can, write down a list of 10 people that you know. They could be anybody, you know, friends, some family, teachers at school, some famous people you know from TV, or whatever you can think of. Here are the 10 people that I chose that I just randomly picked out. We've got Andre Agassi, who's a tennis player. We've got Anne from the bookshop, who's in my town here, just down the road in the bookshop. Then we've got Jason, my best friend. Homer Simpson from The Simpsons. We've got Ashling, my sister. Then we've got Henry the Butcher, who again is here in my hometown. Uh, we've got Hugh, my old coach. Then we've got Derek Zoolander, who is a character from a movie. We've got Cristiano Ronaldo, a soccer player, and Kitty from Starbucks, who again is here in my hometown. And now that I have the 10 stages of my journey and the 10 people that I want to remember, it just becomes a case of placing each person into each stage of the journey. And what I've done here is, in blue, I've listed the people that I want to remember. And then in green, I have the stages along my journey. So if I wanted to connect all these together, here is what it would look like. And let's just run through this journey together. So stage one, I walk up to my house and I see Andre Agassi hitting a tennis ball against my front door. Then I walk into my hallway, which is stage two, and it's packed full of people because Anne from the bookshop is there selling some of her books that are now on sale. Stage three, I turn and walk into my sitting room where Jason, my best friend, is playing a soccer game on the computer. Four, then I go into the kitchen where I see Homer Simpson grabbing everything that he can out of the fridge. It's a typical Homer Simpson uh, you know, image. Five, we have next, I walk into the downstairs bathroom where I see Ashling, my sister, blow drying her hair in front of the mirror. Six, then I go around to see Henry the butcher sitting on my stairs. He's sharpening his butcher knife. Next, I go upstairs. I see Hugh, my old coach, writing on the whiteboard in the upstairs bathroom. Stage eight, I go into my bedroom and I see Derek Zoolander practicing his blue steel pose in front of the mirror. Number nine, I go back down the stairs and into my back garden where Cristiano Ronaldo is juggling with a soccer ball. 10. In my garage, Kitty from Starbucks is selling some coffee to all the onlookers. Okay, now that was my journey and you can see how I linked each person into one specific stage along the journey. So the journey is never cluttered with things because I just uh, correlate one item, and in this case one person, for each stage along the journey. And you can notice how in each of the stages, I tried to give each character an action that made sense for their situation. So for example, Anne from the bookshop was selling books in my hallway, Homer Simpson was eating all the food in the kitchen, and Kitty from Starbucks was selling coffee in my garage. Now, linking actions to people in each stage makes remembering them extremely easy. And it's one of the reasons that the journey method is so powerful. So, I mean, you could just place the objects into the stages, or in this case, the people into the stages, but the fact that I made it interactive makes everything a lot easier to remember. So we can remember from the previous lectures, I say, try and make the images a little bit unusual, try and make them real, try and make them somehow connected to your lives. So that's, how, that's why in these stages, I made sure that the characters or these people were doing some type of activity that was concurrent to what they would usually do throughout the day. 
Now, if I had them doing different activities, then that would still be a good thing because remember that fits into being unusual. So the main point here is making things interact will enhance the learning experience and will enhance your memorization. So what I want you to do now is try memorizing the 10 people you have written down or if you want you can use the 10 people I use but you may not know some of those because a lot of them are from my experience here in my hometown. So if you, wrote, if you had written down 10 people try and put those 10 people into your journey that you also created, the 10 stages. If you haven't done that it's very important that you go through this and at least try and if you don't understand it go through the whole video again and go through it a few times. You gotta uh, understand that this single memorization technique is one of the most powerful techniques that you will ever learn. It may not be super easy at the start, it may be a little bit difficult, it may not make super much sense to you right now, but if you go through this, you're gonna understand how to learn material very, very quickly. So once you've done that, once you are able to memorize your 10 people very, very fast, then move on to the next section. Now the journey method, uh, this is the last slide on this actually, it uses a combination of the techniques that we've learned in the last few lectures and before you move on, I just realized that if you haven't gone through the first few lectures then it's definitely going to be difficult for you to go through this. So if you are having difficulty, go back to the old lectures that we've done. Go back to the linking method, go back to the chain method, and go back to the peg system because this journey method uses all those systems. Now the cool thing about the journey method, and this is what really makes it brilliant, is that the amount of knowledge that can be stored is virtually limitless because the amount of storage space available is essentially unlimited. So if you can think about it, the only thing that restricts you is the amount of journeys that you create and the amount of stages that you place along those journeys. So if you had a long list of information or a long essay or whatever to learn, all you need to do is to create more stages and then you can fit more information in. Therefore, the journey method can be used to learn any type of information and it really is invaluable as a learning tool. So like I said before, go through Make sure you can memorize the 10 names that you have and then when you have that done, then move on to the next section.